Researchers in Europe have linked sharp agricultural price increases, including a 300% spike in Australian lettuce and a 50% rise in European olive oil, to extreme weather events between 2022 and 2024. 호주에서 어, 양상추 가격 값이 300% 오르고 유럽산 올리브유가 50% 뛰는 등 세계적으로 농산물 가격이 가파르게 상승한 배경에. 2022년부터 2024년 사이 발생한 극단적인 기상 이변 사례들이 관련 있다는 유럽 연구진의 조사 결과가 발표됐습니다. All right, we're talking about the weather again. Tell us more. Again. So researchers from this uh, group in Europe analyzed different weather events, hmm. um, extreme weather events in particular, and say that price jumps in food prices um, have. or can be linked to these extreme weather events and that those are caused by climate change. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have so many climate change related stories we these do. days. It seems almost daily. Yeah. And so it seems obvious, but you know, if you look all around us, all these sort of events that we're uh, seeing on the news and that we are actually experiencing here in Korea and around the world are all part of uh, what we're sadly calling the new normal mm. um, in terms of what we uh, you know, consider uh, in our yearly weather patterns. Um, some examples ex include you know, extreme heat here in Asia. Yeah. So, um, for example, in China last year, there was a heat wave that led to temperatures of around 46 degrees Celsius. Oh my goodness. And so that in turn causes you know, that batch of crops to die. There's that big ripple effect. Exactly. And yeah. then that raises prices for yes. farmers. And then that becomes uh, the price that consumers have to pay. Exactly. So it's all linked. Mm. When you're paying more out of your own wallet, you know, it sort of really hits you hard, doesn't it? More so than just saying something's happening in the skies. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, unrelated to. Right. Us. It's no longer something that you just see on the news mm. or it's not just a, a report on the economy yeah. or a business report. It's now really come to the table for us. Mm. Um, here in Korea, I think uh, um, uh, an index that's used often is the price of Napa cabbage, mm -hmm. which is, of course, the main ingredient in kimchi. Yeah. And uh, when those prices go up, you know, households really feel it. Mm, absolutely. Well, let's talk about um, prices going up. There was a huge spike in Australian lettuce prices. Mm -hmm. Spike, uh, it can be used as a noun or a verb. A mm. spike is, you can imagine, the shape of a spike, like on the back of a, of a dinosaur's back. Okay. Or if you look at a physical chart or graph, if, a, if numbers are going up, the mm. arrow is going to spike. Um, and when you have a spike or when something spikes, it means it increases, but it increases very sharply, yeah. very intensely. So it's not subtle, it's not a, it's not a soft line. Spike라는 게 명사로도 쓰이고 동사로도 쓰이는데요. 어, 보통은 우리가 이제 경제 뉴스에서 얘기할 때는 갑자기 뭔가 확 올랐을 때 어, 급증, 급등의 의미로 많이 쓰죠. 어, 그런데 이제 물리적인 뾰족한 것도 스파이크입니다. Uh, would you, what, what do you call the, the things on the back of a porcupine or a hedgehog? Uh, that's not a spike, is, is that? Um, what do you call that? Those, those are quills. Quills, no? quills, quills, yeah. Right? So, so, I mean, they look spiky, I guess, right. or prickly. Those pointy needles pointy. on the back yeah. of a porcupine. Yeah. But, but that's I called a quill. A quill, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for specifically for those animals. But mm. I think, um, you know, in normal conversation, if we called those spikes, I think... People would understand, Everyone maybe. Everyone would, okay. would understand, unless, you know, you're on National Geographic uh, and, mm. you know, specifically on as an animal expert. But yeah, mm. 네. those are all spikes as well. 뾰족뾰족한 그런 고슴도치라든지 포큐파인 뒤에 있는 거는 보통 quill이라고 하는데요. 그것도 어쨌든 이제 이미지는 비슷하죠. 뾰족뾰족하다. 그래서 mm -hmm. 스파이크에 이제 어떻게 보면 통하는 이미지는 있어요. 그래서 그렇게 it's not called a spike. But people right. would maybe understand yeah. if English is not your native language and you said, you know, there's a lot of spikes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it's descriptive. Yeah. You're yeah. describing what it looks like. Mm. Um, and as far as like an action, you know, in the sport of volleyball, you yeah. have the motion of a spike. Yes. And that's also very intense and hard. Got so it. you can imagine it that way too. 네, 좋습니다. 
자, extreme weather events. What about that? Extreme weather events is mm. the um, umbrella term for all these things that are happening around the world, including yeah. flooding, extreme rainfall. We have the crazy wildfires mm. that we've seen in Korea as well as around the world. Typhoons, hurricanes, all these things that are happening. And what this uh, research group in Europe specifically said, which I thought thought was the most interesting, is that between 2022 and 2024. There were so many of the weather events that they analyzed had never happened before 2020. Yeah, yeah. So that's how crazy mm. these extreme weather events were. 우리는 보통 기상 이변이라고 하잖아요. 근데 영어에서는 극한 기상 현상, extreme weather events라고 표현을 합니다. 자, 그럼 다시 한번 제가 읽어 볼게요. Researchers in Europe have linked sharp agricultural price increases including a 300% spike in Australian lettuce and a 50% rise in European olive oil to extreme weather events between 2022 and 2024. Let's move on to the next headline. Paleontologists at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science have uncovered a rare dinosaur fossil right beneath the museum's parking lot during a drilling project intended to extract an earth core sample. 미국 덴버 자연과학 박물관의 지하 주차장 바닥에서 지질 구조를 알아보기 위한 시추공 작업이 진행되던 도중 희귀 공룡 화석이 발견됐습니다. Wow, talk about a find, mm. an unexpected find at that. Uh, paleontologists at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science weren't really looking for this. Uh, they weren't uh, thinking that they would find this incredible discovery. But underneath the museum's parking lot, they found this dinosaur bone wow. in January. I don't even think that they, they themselves and mm. their experts in this knew what they were looking at uh, because they were actually drilling for something yeah. else. And uh, they they came upon this. It must have been lying there for hundreds of years at least. Oh, maybe, I, maybe thousands. Of, yeah, longer. Yeah, a very very long time. <laughs> Millennia. Right. Oh my goodness. So it was right beneath the parking lot. Right beneath the parking yeah, lot. What does and that they mean? Were, yeah. um, they were digging. Yeah. So beneath means to be under something. And if you put the r- word right. In front of there, mm. uh, you're giving it even more immediacy, even mm. more proximity. So it's even closer. So yeah. it's right beneath. Mm. So it's right under. It's very closely under something. Mm, exactly. 자 바로 아래 있었다라는 뜻으로 바로 right beneath 아래라는 표현이 있습니다. Um, I don't know if you could uh, explain to us the difference between beneath and under because they are quite similar, aren't they? Are they interchangeable? Would you say? Yeah, you know, oh my goodness. Mm. I feel like I'm... Sorry, I've put you on the spot, No, not at all. Putting me on the spot is fine, but I, I'm having nightmares of my Japanese class learning these prepositions. Oh, really? Okay. Prepositions are hard. They're always mm. relative, right? But beneath and under, um, they feel the same. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, to be under something, to be beneath something. Yeah. Um, to me, I feel like if something is beneath... Mm-hmm. It's hidden. Mm. It's covered. You can't immediately see it. Right. Whereas under, you might be able to see something that is under. For example, um, I don't know. Let's say, you know, there are many shelves. Mm-hmm. If you look at the top shelf, the one that's under that shelf. Right. You, you can see it. You don't have to dig or anything. Mm-hmm. Um You know, there's there's an apple under the shelf with the pineapple or something. <laughs> you're looking Sorry. at my pineapple yes. shirt, yes. and I think your brain thought of yeah, pineapple. Exactly. <laughs> But when you say beneath, I feel like you have to maybe open a lid. No, not a lid, but uh, maybe some... lift a blanket or something, or dig the ground. It's covered in some way, maybe. Right. And another way to say that, I think, um, going on what you're saying is under Mm. feels a little bit more general. Yes, yes. So under, if you had to analyze this, I Mm. feel like under is um, just more of a positioning thing. Mm. And beneath, like you say, does sort of feel um, a little bit more covered. Got uh, it. Cloaked. Yeah. 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 So if you only have time Mm. to memorize one, I would Mm. say under. Exactly. So this uh, dinosaur fossil was... Under the parking lot. Mm, right. But no one knew it was there. Right. And I should give you the, the number of years there that we were yeah. just talking about. Okay. But the dinosaur is from 67 million years ago. So I that would be... quite far off, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> we're not paleontologists. But oh my goodness. Uh, so it was beneath. It was Oof. obviously covered by layers of parking lot material. Yeah, and cement and, and all of that. Mm-hmm, yeah. And asphalt. And then uh, when they went to dig, they were looking for something else. They were looking 
looking for an earth core sample, mm. so where you drill out like a kind of like a straw yeah. of um, the earth for studying purposes, for right. research purposes, and then they found right. This fossil. Mm. So the project, the drilling project, was intended to extract earth core sample. Mm. Intended, the past tense or past particle of the verb intend to mean to do something. Yeah. Uh, that was your purpose. That mm. was your goal. So if something was intended, um, it it's uh, something you had planned to do. Yeah. 의도했다는 뜻이죠. 뭐뭐 할 의도였다. 그래서 원래는 이제 공룡 화석을 찾으려는 의도가 전혀 아니고요. 어, drilling for earth core sample이라고 했죠. 이게 바닥의 그 지질 구조를 알아보기 위한 drilling 작업이었습니다. 그게 원래 의도였는데 생각지도 못하게 그 주차장 아래에 공룡 화석이 드러났습니다. I think that's a good point you mentioned right now to intended to intend something uh, you can plan you it can mean that you are uh, going to do something yeah. but there's sort of a feeling like you had planned to do something but mm. maybe it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. So yeah. the scientists had intended to look for something else but they found this mm. fossil. Mm. Paleontologists are the people who study dinosaurs. Right. Uh, okay. um, like Ross. Like Ross and friends. <laughs> yes, exactly. I think Ross is probably the most famous <laughs> yeah. paleontologist. His best friends could never <laughs> understand his job. His job. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a very, um, you know, he's they were never interested in either. Yeah. Dinosaur bones. And he loved it. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the headline again. Paleontologists at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science have uncovered a rare dinosaur fossil right Right beneath the museum's parking lot during a drilling project intended to extract an earth core sample. Now here's our final headline. A man in the US has become two million dollars richer after accidentally buying two identical one million dollar winning lottery tickets for the same drawing, mistakenly thinking the first one had expired. 미국의 한 남성이 100만 달러 상금을 주는 같은 회차 복권을 실수로 두장 구매해 200만 달러의 당첨금을 받았습니다. 이 남성은 두장중 처음 산 복권이 이미 시한이 지났다고 착각했던 것으로 알려졌습니다. Okay, do explain this for us. What happened? Okay, so the winner of this um, of this two million dollars is a man named Paul. Corcoran okay. from mm -hmm. the U.S. state of Massachusetts, and uh, the what happened was he bought one ticket mm. for the seven drawings of this game that he was playing, okay. and uh, he thought that the drawing was over. He thought that the oh, final okay. one was over, so he bought another one but he mistakenly. Wrote the same numbers, right? So that's the point. I yeah. think he uses the same yeah. set of numbers, which okay. some people do, and some mm. people use random ones. He must have used the same numbers. It had to have been the case. Yeah. Because then he found out that he had hit Pater twice. I, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought the lottery organizers would, would say, oh, well, it's the same, you know. Kind of batch. Thing. Yeah, of so we're just going to give you the one prize of $1 million. But I'm surprised they actually said, oh, you have two identical winning tickets. We'll give you $2 million. Right, because... Technically, he has yeah. two tickets yeah. with the correct numbers, mm -hmm. and as far as the lottery commission goes, yeah. you know, it could be just two different people. Well, well good for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's $2 million richer. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. That would be around, so let's say, uh, under three billion South Korean won. No? 한, uh, 한 so for today's exchange yeah. rate, obviously, it'd be mm. a little bit under. 30억 조금 안 되네요. 한 27억 정도. Yeah. 네. 와 대단합니다. Mm. That's oh. a lot of money. 그래요. 자, identical. What does that mean? Identical or identical uh, means uh, describes when something is the exact same as mm. another thing. Yes. It can't be similar. It can't be sort of the same. It mm. can't be alike in a little bit. Yeah. Um, it has to be exactly the same. Right. So with twins, mm -hmm. you either have identical twins mm -hmm. or fraternal, fraternal twins. Right. Yeah. Uh, 우리는 이제 일란성 쌍둥이, 이란성 쌍둥이라고 하는데요. 그 일란성이 영어로는 identical, 똑같이 생겼으니까. 그 다음에는 이란성 쌍둥이는 fraternal twins라고 합니다. Fraternal. 음, 
그래요. What about to expire? To expire uh, means for something to time out. Uh, it means for something to no longer be of use or within the deadline. Um, in this case, we use it as expired. Mm. Um, so it describes when something is uh, you, no longer usable. Mm. 그렇죠. 뭔가 더 이상 사용할 수 없게 됐을 때 만료되거나 mm-hmm. 기간이 다 끝나버리거나 mm. 그럴 때 it expires 라고 할수 있죠. We use it for food, yes. we use it for deadlines, mm-hmm. we use it for reports, we yeah. use it for coupons, we use it for uh, you know, department store vouchers mm. uh, when there's a date on it and you've passed that mm. date. 그래. It has become expired. 네. 기한이 만료가 됐을 때 쓰는 표현입니다. 자, 다시 한번 읽어볼게요. A man in the U.S. has become $2 million richer after accidentally buying two identical $1 million winning lottery tickets for the same drawing, mistakenly thinking the first one had expired. All right, well, that's it for the headlines with Janet.